So this week, I did my second border run to Panama. I did my first border run back in January and my 90 days were up because if you're a perpetual tourist, you have to go and leave the country and come back every 90 days. Um, and that's where I am at this point in my, uh, my life here in Costa Rica. So I was due to go to Panama, which I did. And I have to say the experience this time was a lot smoother than it was the first time just because I had a lot more confidence and I knew what to expect. And I definitely had all my documents and uh, it was it was actually a fun time. I like Paso Canoas. It's a fun, it's not like a tourist attraction, I would say, but there's a lot of places to shop and it's really interesting. It's kind of dangerous on the streets just as far as traffic goes. So you have to be really careful that you don't get run over. You have to look both ways before you cross the road. The sidewalks aren't great. But it's fun because there's a variety of stores. And one of the cool things is in some of the stores, you go in one side of the store from Panama. And if you walk out the other side, you're in Costa Rica. So I, I just kind of got a kick out of that. It was just kind of really interesting to me. And there's also like a little, there's a little alleyway that goes that I didn't see before. It's just kind of like an alleyway of stores. And I think, and I think that is on the Costa Rica side. But that was in, that's they're just all like kind of like small little kiosk in there. On the Panama side, there's the Jerusalem Mall, and there's the City Mall, which are are pretty big. There are a lot of connected stores, and there's a lot of electronics and like refrigerators and a lot of things that you can't get here in Costa Rica. And the prices tend to be better, but you have to be careful because not they're not always better. Like I was looking at a watch and it was like ridiculously overly priced. So. You really never know. You have to you have to do your homework on what you're you're going to buy, but in general things do tend to be cheaper there, and it, everything's priced in U.S. dollars. So it's it's easier for me to understand what the prices are that way. So I, I'm probably going to go back there and just do a little shopping trip in a month or so, just because um, there's things I, I want to get there. It was fun. It, was, it takes me two hours to get there. And I stayed at the same hotel that I, I always stay. Hotel, residential, Las Canarias. And I've got permission from Jenny, who's my connection in, in, uh, in Panama at that hotel. She says I can give out her personal uh, phone number for her WhatsApp so you can text her. So at the end of this video, I'll give you Jenny's contact number so you can contact her via WhatsApp. And she only speaks Spanish, so you're going to have to translate your English into Spanish when you talk to her. And you can make the reservations that way. You, um, you are required to send a photo of your passport. So if you're not comfortable doing that, then you wouldn't be able to do it this way. So just not, I'm not telling you the way that you should do it. I'm just telling you how I did it. One interesting note is when you leave Costa Rica and when you enter Panama, you have two windows you need to go through because in Costa Rica you go to one window to pay your exit tax and then you go to another cross the street to another window and that's where you officially get stamped out of Costa Rica. Then you go up to Panama immigration and you go up to window and you give them your paperwork and then they give you a form to fill out and you fill out the form and you go back to that same window and then you go to another window to actually get stamped into Panama. But when you leave Panama, it's just one window. They ask you, they, they asked me where I was from and they took four fingerprints from my right hand and that was it. And then to go back into Costa Rica, I went down the road to Costa Rica Customs, Costa Rica Immigration, and um, they wanted to know where I lived and they wanted documentation that I was leaving within 90 days. And I gave them that and easy peasy. But you know, the Forrest Gump rule applies at immigration, totally. Because immigration is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So my experience may not be your experience. I hear people all, all the time talking about, oh yeah, I went there and they didn't ask me for anything, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm. I'm glad that this time when I came into Panama, I had my Tracopia bus ticket uh, from David to San Jose. Even though I drove my car right to the border, I parked on the Costa Rica side and, and uh, 
I parked there. I still had to have proof that I was leaving Panama going to another country. It's kind of kind of ridiculous. It's an $18 um, ticket, but I, I just look at it like some kind of extra tax you're paying. So I've got to, you, you present them with your Tercopia ticket and uh, your receipt for a hotel that you're going to stay in in Panama. And um, the vaccination stuff, I had to do that. And if you, if you don't have your vaccination, you have to have your negative test. And I, you know, I don't know anything about that because I just, you know, I've got the vaccination. I, I go that route. But it was fairly easy. I didn't really need to understand Spanish because I knew what they were saying anyways before they said it. So that helps. I'm, and my Spanish is maybe just a tiny bit better than it was three months ago. I understand things just a little bit better. Poco a poco. But I can tell you I did a lot of walking because to get to the uh, city mall, it's like way, way down. But it, it was fun, it, it, it was, there's just so much to see. And it's easy to get lost when you go into some of these places because it's, there's like all these different connecting stores. And I mean, you're, half the time I didn't really know if I was in Panama or, or Costa Rica. And it, it, at the border, it's not like it's really, like they've got machine gun towers to say, oh, you can't go across the border because people kind of flow freely in and out of the stores from one side to the other. You know, I don't know the legalities of that, so, you know, I don't, I don't want to tell anybody it's okay to do that. I'm just saying that that seems to be the way. And another thing is that masks are no longer legally required on the streets. They're still required in stores and in closed places, but the masks are no longer required on the streets, which in January they were. Walking on the streets, you were supposed to have a mask on. But what I noticed when I went to Panama people still wear the mask on the streets. So out of respect, I wore my mask when I was out on the street around any people or anything. So another piece of advice, and when I say that, I'm really giving the advice to myself. And this advice is, if, when you've, if you've got a backpack, make sure everything's zipped up. I have, I'm lazy, so I have a tendency just to like to cram stuff in there and leave it open a little bit so I can pull stuff in and out. But when you're at the border, there's just, you know, there's a lot of, people around you're not really sure about. So zip everything all the way up. Cause I was at the Costa Rica side at the window um, at customs and uh, I got finished there and a, a guy looked at me and, and let me know that my, my backpack was unzipped. And uh, he was looking at me like, you know, that's, that's not cool. You don't leave your backpack unzipped. So yeah, don't be lazy about your backpack. Zip everything up, especially if you're by yourself. Don't leave anything that can be taken. You know, I don't think I had anything. I, I just had like my, in that particular compartment, I had maybe a charger or something like that, but it's just good practice. Keep everything zipped up and be careful. It's easy to get that false sense of security. Just, uh, you know, keep your head on a swivel a little bit, you know, make sure that you know your surroundings and, and uh, don't get complacent. Well, another 90 days have passed. You know what that means. It's time to do a border run to Panama. This is my second time doing the border run to Panama, so I'm not quite as nervous as I was the first time. My biggest concern is always the fact that I don't speak Spanish, but I believe I've got all my documents in order. Knock on wood. We'll see what happens. I'm going to be staying in the same hotel that I stayed in last time. Hotel Residential Las Canarias. That's right on the border walking distance from the border because I'm parking my car outside the border walking on in so here I am I'm in the same uh, parking place I was in before and I'm heading to check out of Costa Rica So when you're coming into Panama, you go to this window behind me there and you give them your documentation that you have and usually they have you fill out another form and then come back to the window. So you have to take the form and you come over here and this, these little stalls here. So one thing I would recommend 
that I would find really helpful is having a either a clipboard or a notebook because otherwise you're you're writing on this uneven surface and it doesn't uh, it's not a great place to write. <laughs> what inter the interesting thing about these stores is you enter I just entered in the, the Panama side and if you go to the other side of the store you're in Costa Rica so you, you enter in I entered the store in Panama and that's Costa Rica. So this is Costa Rica. And so technically I think the stores are in Panama, but the exit is uh, Costa Rica. here and we're back in Panama again so coming into Panama I did have to have my return bus ticket I did have to have my vaccination card I had a copy of that that saved me some time there's a form you fill out online and they give you a QR code but you still have to fill out um, another form when you get in the window and they send you back to fill out the form and then you come back to the window again then they approve you then you go to the other window to actually get your passport stamped having the bus ticket made it things a lot easier because last time i didn't have the bus ticket and they were kind of not going to let me go but then they felt sorry for me so what you do is you get a bus ticket from david to san jose which is 18 dollars us and that is your proof of that you're going to leave the country even though i drove and my car is parked you know a few hundred yards away from immigration this is what they want you to do so i figure it's just a, an extra 18 dollar tax is the way i look at it but it was a lot easier this time just because i didn't have the anxiety of not knowing what was going on so i'm all packed up ready to go back to costa rica leaving hotel residential Las Canarias and it looks like the rain is has subsided so that's kind of good a little drizzle maybe but that's about it headed back to Costa Rica headed to exit out of Panama And there's absolutely no lines at all there, so that's pretty great. Last time I was here, there was a tour bus, and there's like 50 people waiting in line. Now there's not a single person in line. So that was fast and easy. They just asked where I lived in Costa Rica and took four fingerprints from my right hand. Now I'm off to check back into Costa Rica. So I'm all checked back into Costa Rica. So a successful run here in Panama. I've just got to pay for my parking and then I'm out of here. Back to Ubita. I am celebrating my one year anniversary here in Costa Rica and I will be talking about that a little bit in a future episode kind of reflecting upon my time here. I tell you what the time flies by fast. The first three months I was here it seemed like it lasted forever. It's kind of like childhood. Childhood is like 
you know, it seems like it was such a long period. And then all of a sudden, things start going by faster and faster and faster. You know, it's like every month comes around, uh oh, time to pay the rent again. That's that's kind of what makes it seem like it goes faster again. As a matter of fact, I owe rent today. I think I better go do that right now. That's all I've got for this edition of Costa Rica Story. Make sure you like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to. But most importantly, leave your comments down below because I want to hear what you've got to say. Hasta luego. Thank you.